video, take dos of the homemade steam engine. First one I had to stop. So, here we go. Uh, this is part, I don't even know what part this is. Concept design steam engine. I'm working on the timing right now. Uh, quick steel. I used it and I have it sitting somewhere. There we go. Quick steel, $4.99 uh, at Walmart. It, uh, I was very impressed with it. It's drinking water safe, a whole bunch of other, it's, it's good, it's, it's safe. Um, they don't suggest eating it, but it's, you know, you can run something you're going to eat through it. Patch a pot, whatever. While JB Weld, right there, will kill you dead. Uh, JB Weld also, something I like, now I'm still a hardcore JB Weld fan, don't get me wrong, that stuff's great. But for this application, it seemed to be a better option, simply because of the fact that it hardens. It, it's it, it's a putty, not a not a uh, gel, so it it's easier to work with and shape. And then the other thing is, it's hard in five minutes, and it cures fully in an hour. So as opposed to waiting twelve hours, I can wait an hour. This stuff does get quite warm, actually. Um, and I know that I can't capture this on camera, but it smells like burnt fart, to be quite plainly about it. It does not smell good. My whole garage smells like a burnt fart. And, uh, yeah. But, aside from the point, pretty good stuff. <clears throat> um, I don't believe it would be quite as strong as JB Weld. Because, basically, I've been told by the guys at the auto shop... That this is pretty much a filler. Yes, it is an epoxy, but it's more of a filler than anything else. Uh, lots of times I use that on uh, dents and auto, you know, repair doors, whatnot. Uh, so anyway, put that on the lobes. I still got to shape them, but the first one I kind of started shaping. Basically, that just gives me another lobe, and I had to rough up the plastic, but it, it hasn't come off. And yes, I did turn it around, and it, it didn't pop off, and it didn't gouge it out. This one I did a much worse job on the back one, so I got to reshape it. And um, I didn't need it long though, because this little—it's part of the governor mechanism. This swings back and forth, and I just epoxied it in there so it would quit moving. That goes in there like that, and the lobes do not hit the cam or the counterweights. Thank goodness. Let me get it where you can see up in there. People have been messing with my workshop in here, and I'm not very happy about it. Nothing is where I thought it was. And now, my light's getting pinched. Why is it... Why is it that whenever I do a YouTube video, nothing ever wants to work? Alright, anyway, that should be enough cord. So, it does not hit my counterweights, which is nice. And the lifters are in the piston right now, don't ask me why. But it fits nicely. I'm trying to do this all one handed, it's kind of hard. So it fits pretty nicely. And I know I don't have the lifters in, but it, it does fit up in there nice. Nothing hits, nothing bangs. And crankshaft shot. Anyway. So, yeah, that that's kind of working now. Um, also, and I have to reshape them, like I said, sand them down. Because you can sand, drill, tap that stuff, just like JB did this. Um, for the purpose of this video, just realized that my old exhaust port, this one, is now my intake. And my intake is now my exhaust. Disadvantage to this setup is... My intake is smaller than my exhaust. Can't do much. But the huge, huge, huge advantage is I have pipe threads. As to over here, I would have to make a port. Now, I do have a port, a plastic intake port that's cracked that I'm going to JB weld up and put it over here so I can put my steam out. And I'm thinking about trying to find a small, a small engine turbo. Because I'm going to test this all on compressed air, but I'm going to, I want to run it on steam. If I can find a very small turbo, I can run the turbocharger where the steam turns the turbine when it's coming out and then blows or air into the airbox. Um, but this right here, I'm cutting this out of the equation later. Right now, 
this is this is one of those things that lets you turn the pipe even when it's not screwed in or when it's screwed in and won't leak but it does leak air so I need to cut it out of here and it, it doesn't turn right now I have it wrenched down really tight but basically the reason for this weird shape and not just come straight out like most people is this is going to go in a flywheel remember and this is getting relatively close to the side I think the sides about here so this will fit in here but it's getting close so you know this is as close as I can get it lengthwise and then length is good here like I really wish I could extend this out this is a old valve I use the its matching partner except it was larger on a, the first steam engine and uh, the only reason I have three but the other one doesn't seal good but this one it's a little bit hard to turn so I need to free it up a little that's not a good pair of pliers I need to free it up more but it's it's a good valve the only problem is when you have it open not when it's closed because it's just a uh, you screw it in and it pushes this little rubber stopper up these are really old this is the house this is out of was built in 1950 so these are about 1950s um, plumbing equipment but it leaks all around here so I gotta seal it up and if I were to take this off for you it's all slippery WD-40 Wow as slick it leaks really bad all around here but um yeah it's all brass and copper but I don't know if anyone has any ideas for sealing that but I might just have to get a valve but I, I kinda like these twist out, in twist out valves they're pretty good throttles it's good though because it's facing this way and I can have my air coming in or steam slash air for testing then have my throttle here and just be able to go back and forth and it's wide open right now and then this is shut and it does go back a little bit farther but there's a sticky spot right there valve lifters they're not too important right now um, engine turns over good really lubed up these side walls with some gear oil to make it seat better these rings were pretty bad bore looks good Right. Oh. Bore looks good, but the rings um, leak. This engine was a mess. That's why it's becoming a steam engine. I was never going to get it to run great. Uh, something else I've discovered. It's going to be hard to capture on camera because it spits at me. But if I open up the valve completely and set it at about 50 PSI, the valve, I guess the valve seat rating on these is about 50 psi because if I put it, then I hope it doesn't spit everywhere, but if I put it at 50 psi it leaks real bad but if I drop it down to see it's 50 right now, let's try I was getting it to work on 45, or that's 45 Nope, still breaking it. Let's try 40. There we go, that's 40 psi. <clears throat> 40. It's leaking here, that's that hissing noise. But my valve is not, seat is not broken. That's 40 psi. Anyhow, so 40 PSI is not going to cut it. I'm not running this engine at under 40 PSI at all times. I wanted to be able to rev this thing up for a couple, you know, seconds or whatever, just a little quick rev, maybe up to around 100 PSI. So I guess the only solution to that is to get a beefier, the exhaust spring I don't have to worry about because it's actually pushing it down. But I guess I gotta get a beefier spring that will keep it down more. I don't know how that would work. I might ask some of my YouTube knowledgeable people. But yeah. So the steam engine is coming along. I got 30 seconds, but just wanted to mainly show my cam update. I'll get this worked on tomorrow. It's spring break tomorrow, so I'll have lots of time on my hands. And um, if you haven't already know, the Nova is finally starting to run good. So, yes, so the steam engine. Concept design steam engine.